Welcome back to the McLaren Thought Leadership Centre and CNN Inspirations. I'm Max Foster. This hour, we've taken you on a journey into the sea, around the world, and back in time to find exciting new species. And we've had three adventurous explorers along for the ride. Marine biologist Diva Amon, uh, also mammalogist uh, Chris Helgen, and uh, paleontologist Dean Lomax. Thank you all for being here. Uh, we've got an audience with us. They've got lots of questions for you, and Nina's going to pick them up. I certainly will. Let's start out with Harry here, who's got a question uh, talking about sea creatures, is that right? And what they used to eat, what was their favourite dish? Yeah, I was wondering, are most sea creatures omnivores, herbivores or carnivores? Yes, what do they eat? A lot of them, I'd say, would have to be herbivores, because of course that's the basis, you know, we're working our way up the food chain and yeah. you've got the basis being producers, so things like plants, and then next will be herbivores, and that will probably be the most numerous. And then as you move up into different types of diets, it gets less and less, so carnivores being the least. Max, let's uh, move along to the other end of the room here, because I want to ask Gabriella, because um, she's got a question here about, I suppose it's the most interesting species that any of these people on our panel has ever discovered. Is, it, is that right? What is your favourite species, dead or alive? That one, uh, it's hard to answer, right, because of... Uh, uh, Life is so varied and there's just uh, so many uh, incredible animals, but I do have a favorite mammal, uh, a favorite animal. It's something called the long-beaked echidna. And this is the world's largest egg-laying mammal. And there's sort of two basic ways to be a mammal, egg-laying and not. And so we know the platypus, but there's also species called echidnas. This long-beaked echidna has a very long nose and it eats earthworms in New Guinea rainforests. And some years back, I was lucky enough to come across these animals in, in person and discover a population in a remote corner of New Guinea where uh, we didn't know they were living. And so uh, that's uh, a thrilling moment, but that's my favorite creature, a very strange kind of mammal. Dean, you were waiting for this you know, question. I've been waiting all day for this. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's, there's lots of interesting animals that I love, but I brought this along with me today. And I, I just favorite little trick that. here. <laughs> so this is a claw, it's a copy, it's not the original sadly, but it's a claw of a dinosaur called Baryonyx, which was found right here in Surrey in 1983. It belongs to the largest meat-eating dinosaur so far found in Europe, probably about 9 or 10 metres long. And this was found by an amateur collector in Surrey. Would that have been, where would that have been on so this, the... This would have been, this is actually, it's a thumb claw. Yeah. So it would have been, you know, you, you can all just take a look at your thumb, this is the, the claw at the end of the thumb. And it would have been a lot, a lot larger as well, yes. it would have had a layer of keratin, very much how, you know, rhinos on their horns is made of keratin. This would have a keratinous sheath. Gives a real sense of how huge these animals were. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've got to ask you the same question as well. So it, it doesn't have to be in the sea. But it is in the sea, it of has course. To be in the sea. Um, so it would have to be something known as the hoff crab, which I'm sure some of you have heard of. And this was actually named after David Hasselhoff. It's a crab that has <laughs> a very hairy chest. It's white. Um, and what it uses these hairs for is that it farms bacteria on its chest, on these hairs, and then it eats them. And so it's basically like it has its own grocery on its body. And it lives <laughs> in the deep ocean in the southern, southern, uh, southern ocean, basically. Uh, we've got lots of young people in here. Um, what's your advice? Uh, you've all done it in different ways into getting into the dream job. I know you all feel you're in the dream jobs, but how would you get into your line of work um, if you had advice for young people here? I think the best advice I could give is just work incredibly hard, follow your passion and your dreams, and think about the bigger picture. Don't just assume that you're gonna be able to make a career because you go to university or whatever. You've gotta really mm. hard, work extremely hard, especially like a field like paleontology, because there are so many people yeah. and it's too few jobs. You've got to work so incredibly And you hard. didn't do a degree, Christian. No, initially, yeah. Initially, I didn't do a degree. I, I immersed myself straight into experience and worked my way up the ladder by seeing the sort of bigger picture and not just saying, I want to be a paleontologist right now. I wanted to yeah. get there by being hands-on and learning these things. Would you have done something different? My advice is, I think, uh, uh, think creatively. And I think that's advice for you know, any, any field of, mm. of, of inquiry or, or work. Uh, Science is as creative as art or you know, any other endeavor. And it's really by thinking creatively and, and pushing beyond that we can ask questions. Well, what if there are yeah. you know, species out there that we don't know? Why don't we look here? And so um, that, that uh, aspect of, of thinking beyond you know, what, what is conventional, what's yeah. known, that's probably the best advice I have for budding scientists. Follow your passion, give it a go. Is that your advice? So definitely that is important, but 
I'd have to say, you know, when we're younger, we all have this innate sense of curiosity. And a lot of people lose that when they get older. And so I'd have to say, you know, never stop exploring, never stop asking those questions, because that's so important if you want to have a, a career in, in science. Well, thank you, all three of you. Thank you to all the guests as well. We've learned so much. And actually, we learn how little we know as well, don't we? And how there's so much more to find out. So the young people in the audience need to pick up from where these guys eventually leave off. Uh, marine biologist Diva Amon, thank you very much indeed. A professor and mammologist Chris Helgen, thank you. And paleontologist Dean Lomax, thank you very much for being here uh, and showing these great sort of wild discoveries uh, into the studio and on CNN. Thank you to Nina as well for gathering all those great questions out there in the audience. Our audience as well, appreciate you joining us here at the McLaren Thought Leadership Centre. I'm Max Foster, goodbye.